Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So today is Thursday, which means it's Booklist Thursday. Booklist Thursday is something I do with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. We come to you every Thursday with some sort of book thoughts, ideas, recommendations, something bookish related. So today we're gonna do what we're calling faves from our faves. So favorite books from our favorite authors and we're gonna keep it kind of on the thrillery side of things. Um, when I was going through and picking these books, I realized pretty quick that I had three women authors. And so then I'm like, we're just going to keep it with three women authors, with all women authors. So um, nothing against Riley Sager, who I enjoy, or who else? There's a whole bunch. Um, uh, S.A. Cosby or Max Brooks, like nothing. We're just going to go with, with female authors. So it's just a thing. Um, all right, so first one, one of my favorite creepy, thrillery, scary-ish authors is Jennifer McMahon. Um, she likes to bring in some ghosty, creepy elements to it that I think are super, super awesome. So one of my favorites from her is The Invited. So this one takes place between a newly married husband and wife, Helen and Nate, um, they are giving up suburbia. They are done with the like city life. They want to move into the country, build a little house, be a little bit more self-sustained out in the out in the country. So they find 44 acres of rural land um, that they decide to build their dream house on. When they discover that this beautiful property has a very dark and violent past, Helen a former history teacher, so that kind of plays into it because she loves like the story behind things. Um, she becomes consumed by this local legend of Hattie Breckenridge. She was a woman who lived and died on this property centuries ago. Um, again, she has this passion for artifacts and, and things that have stories behind them. Uh, and so she starts to incorporate these special materials into her house. Well, the special materials with the stories don't always come by themselves. So it's a trip. Anyways, loved it. Um, another favorite author, and I'm trying to go with ones I don't talk a lot. I feel like I've been talking up Simone St. James lately, and I don't know if I could pick a favorite by her right now. So don't think I'm, she's not a fave. She's still a fave. And if she's watching, still, Simone, you're still fantastic. You're just, we're going to put you in another video. Anyways, another favorite of mine is Heather Gutenkopf. So this is The Overnight Guest. This one is fantastic to read if you're like during a colder, windy, where you just need to cozy up and read. So we have Wiley Lark, um, and she is a true crime writer, and she is putting herself into this farmhouse. It's an isolated farmhouse, and there happens to be a snowstorm going on. Um, but she is retreated there to write her new book. Um, we have a cozy fire, complete silence. It's like that perfect ambiance of like, we're just going to sit and read and be stuck here. Um, the only thing is decades earlier in the house she's staying at, two people were murdered in cold blood and a girl disappeared without a trace. So there's that. As the storm goes on, Wiley herself is trapped inside. She's kind of getting in her head about this story as she's uncovering her new book that she's writing. So she lets her dog outside because obviously, you know, dogs got to go outside. I'm shocked mine hasn't hit the doorbell yet. Um, and the dog doesn't come back right away. So she goes out looking for the dog and in that process discovers a small child in the snow by themselves, not dressed for the weather, no clue where she, where this child came from. Um, so she brings him inside and begins to kind of figure out where this child came from, um, amidst the secrets of this household. So very great, super short very atmospheric. I enjoyed it. Next one of my faves is Miss Karen Slaughter. Miss Karen Slaughter can create scenes that live in your mind rent free for the rest of your life. Fair warning. Um, the good daughter. We have two girls who are forced into the woods at gunpoint. One runs for her life. One is left behind. We're going to leave it at that. This is fantastic but be prepared for 
some pretty, pretty crazy descriptions. Fair warning. Another one of another friend of mine, Chevy Stevens. This is those girls. And this one follows three sisters. Um, Jess, Courtney, and Danny. They live in a remote remote ranch in Western Canada. Chevy Stevens is a Canadian author. All of her books kind of take place there. Um, they work hard, but yet tries they try as hard as they can to just kind of stay out of the way of their father. He's not a great guy. Um, one night, a fight gets out of hand and the sisters are forced to go on the run. Only they get caught in an even worse nightmare when their truck breaks down in a small town. As events spiral out of control, they find themselves in horrifying situations and are left with no choice but to change their names and create new lives. Then we fast forward 18 years later. They're still trying to forget what happened that summer. But when one of the sisters goes missing, followed closely by her niece, they are pulled back into the past as... Um, and this time there's no way to run. They need to just deal with it. Um, if, hmm, some trigger warnings with this as well. There's definitely some multiple types of abuse, a little bit of gore, not quite gore like Karen Slaughter is going to give you gore. Um, but you're going to find yourself being like, and what more can possibly happen? And there we go. So. Fantastic. And then I have my friend Jennifer Hillier because Jar of Hearts, I feel like, is not read by enough people, my friends. Um, Jar of Hearts continues to be my favorite of hers. I haven't read all of her backlist yet, but definitely up there. So I just want to make sure I don't spoil anything. So we have Angela Wong. She's 16, when she was 16 years old, she's one of the most popular school girls in school, and everyone loved her, blah, 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 and she disappears without a trace. Nobody ever suspected that her best friend Georgina, now an executive and rising star in a Seattle company, was involved. Um, 14 years later, Angela Wong's remains are discovered in the woods and near Georgina's childhood home. Um, and then we have another friend of those girls, Kaiser, who's now the detective, uh, finally learns the truth. Angelina was a victim of Kelvin James, the same Kelvin James who murdered at least three other women. To all, to the authorities, Kelvin's a serial killer, but to Gio, he's something else entirely. Back in high school, Kelvin was Gio's first love. So we have this tangled web of who's connected, what really happened, who's keeping secrets, who's not, and we go from there. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Just just go into it. There's definitely some unlikable characters in this one, but it's a trip. So those are my five faves from my faves, some of my faves. Um, oh, I, wish, I, I wish I could tell you even more, but I don't want you to. I think just go into them and, and, and hopefully you enjoy them as much as I have. Thrillers are so hard for me to talk about sometimes because I don't want to give anything away. Um, honorable mentions, like I said, Simone St. James, Gillian Flynn. There's some other other faves for sure out there. So pick them up. If you have, comment below. We can we can chat. <laughs> Absolutely. Otherwise, head over to Sarah's channel and see what she has picked for her faves from faves. Otherwise, like, comment, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And I will see you next time. Bye.